Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, I want to talk about transitioning away from a Gmail address for your Docker server notifications to a completely different system. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. So we've been talking about Docker and Docker containers and that sort of thing on this channel for a couple of years now. And during that process or during that time frame, uh, I have been talking about using a Gmail address for uh, getting notifications from your different Docker containers for different reasons, or even from your Docker server for different reasons. So if we jump over here, we can see on the uh, Google account help for less secure apps in your Google account, it says to help keep your account secure, starting May 30th of 2022, Google will no longer support the use of third-party apps or devices, which ask you to sign on to your Google account using only your username and password. Now, it does have a little disclaimer here that says, uh, please note that this deadline does not apply to Google Workspaces or Google Cloud Identity customers. So chances are uh, you don't fall into that category. If you do, congratulations, this video may not be for you. Also, uh, this isn't the only solution out there for getting notifications uh, for your Docker server. This is just one solution that I found that I wanted to share with you guys. And of course, if you guys have more options or more uh, ideas, uh, other than a self-hosted email service, uh, put those in the comment section down below and I'd be happy to explore those in future videos as well. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to be using or, or demonstrating all of this on uh, a service that we talked about a while back called Uptime Kuma, where I kind of monitor things like websites, uh, uh, cameras around my house, those sorts of things, uh, just so that I can keep things or, or, or be notified when one of those services or devices goes offline. Uh, I've been doing this basically since I released that video video uh, sometime last year, and uh, it's worked really, really well for me. In fact, you can see I've got almost a perfect 100% uptime minus a couple of little things uh, here and there, and that is perfectly acceptable in, in my case because I'm only hosting stuff for myself. Now, of course, uh, I, I wanna get notified when these things go offline or when there's an interruption in their service. And, and as I mentioned, um, basically this whole time I've been using a, a dedicated Gmail address, something that I set up specifically for getting notifications from my Docker server and all all of its containers. Um, of course, we got that notification uh, in that Google Help page saying that that could be going away as soon as May of this year. So what I found uh, in doing some searching was a service called SendGrid. Now SendGrid, so this is SendGrid and uh, I've been using them for, for about a week now, I guess. About a week seems about right. Um, and they uh, are actually uh, owned and operated by a company called Twilio. Uh, if you're not familiar with Twilio, they also make the app Authy, that's a, an authenticator app that I've got on my phone. Um, I didn't even realize it when I signed up with these guys that Authy and these guys are the same team or, or the same uh, backing company, probably a couple of different teams. But um, basically I, I trust Twilio. I've been using Twilio for years for my two-factor authentication stuff. Uh, so it was actually kind of a, a nice little surprise to find out that the, the mail service that I wanted to start using was made by a company I already trust. Uh, so if we come up here to their products, page uh, up here at the top. Uh, right here is what we're looking for. This is SMTP service. And if we click that, uh, you know, here we can see uh, th this is their SMTP service page. And of course it's got their little like, hey, here's companies that trust us. And that that's fine. If you trust those companies, you may trust these guys as well. Um, if we scroll down, we can see that there's a bunch of good information here. You know, it's developer optimized and, uh, you know, dynamic templates and all of this kind of stuff. Um, and, and so basically, um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of information on this page and that's, that's whatever. This is kind of just a landing page, but features pricing, there we go. Let's look at pricing for this. Now, there are uh, some different pricing structures here. We're going to be using the free account, the free setup here, because um, I don't know that it actually shows here. 
uh, basically with the free account at the time, there it is, with the free account at the time of recording this video, uh, you can send up to 100 emails per day. That's 100 emails per day. Now, chances are you don't have 100 containers running on your system. Uh, if you do, maybe you'll want to upgrade to the other service. Maybe you'll set up a couple of free accounts. I'm not sure how you want to run this, but because this allows us to send 100 free emails a day, I think this is a great solution. In fact, uh, if I minimize this and come over to my SendGrid account, here we can see that I signed up. Uh, it looks like on the 16th of this month um, and on the 17th, um, after doing some testing, I sent 17 emails. And if I go to the 18th, I, I sent 38 emails. And on the 19th, uh, which was, um, I lied, the thir also 38 emails. On the 20th, 39 emails. And that was because I was having a lot of up and down, uh, a lot of, I was having issues with a couple of my services um, dropping out. It was, it was actually cameras. It was a Wi-Fi issue, has since been resolved. But the last couple of days, I've been sending about six emails a day, which I think uh, makes this a perfect candidate for a new email or SMTP solution. Uh, this actually isn't an email address. Uh, this is an SMTP solution. So uh, you're not going to be receiving emails uh, to this account. You're only going to be sending emails to this account. So uh, with all of that kind of out of the way, uh, let's jump over, let's set up an account uh, in real time, close to real time anyway, and kind of go through the process of what that looks like. So we're gonna start here on this pricing page for uh, for their SMTP service here. Uh, I guess this is actually just their, their email API plans service. Uh, what I wanna do is just click right here where it says start, uh, start for free. Of course, all of them have the option to start for free, but uh, specifically we're looking at uh, the free plan here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sign up. We're not, and it requires no credit card. Really appreciate that. I've seen a lot of these services uh, that will do like a bait and switch. Where it's like, it's free, enter a credit card. Mm. Anywho, I'm glad that these guys don't ask for that. So I'm going to enter an email address and a password here. And then I'll go ahead and say, I'm not a robot and I accept the terms. You should probably read through the terms uh, just so that you can say, yes, I read them and I agree to them. I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, create an account. So now <clears throat> it's gonna ask you to tell them about you. Uh, you can, uh, I mean, you can fill this in however you'd like to fill it in. Just understand that if you are, are if you misrepresent yourself and what you're doing here, um, they may, I don't have any way to verify this, but they may uh, discontinue your account. So um, do with that information what, you, what you'd what you like to do. I'm going to go ahead and fill this out. I'm going to say other here. Uh, that's fine. How many emails do you send a month? Uh, that's true. And then also 100 to 500 is, is also true for me. So I'm going to go ahead and click on get started here. So we're going to go ahead and create a sender identity here by clicking on uh, the create a single sender. Uh, you could also authenticate a domain if you wanted to. Um, that is completely up to you, but we're not going to cover that in this video. I'm going to go ahead and right here and click on create a single sender. So it's going to ask us who do we want this to be from? Oops. And then I'm going to uh, put in an email address here. Now here it says attempting to send from a free email address domain like Gmail is not recommended. So uh, this may be a case where you'll want to get uh, an email set up for your uh, for your domain. Uh, you can do that with any service you'd like to do that with. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind here. So instead, what I'm gonna do is actually use uh, this email address uh, that I just created for the sake of uh, these notifications. It's gonna be ding at dbtech.com. Uh, I'm also going to uh, put that in there as well. Uh, my company address. Now, this is, this is more specifically where I was talking about uh, how you may uh, run into issues if you misrepresent yourself here. So again, fill in this information how you'd like to just understand that uh, there's a possibility that if you put in uh, incorrect or false information, it may flag your account. So just something to keep in mind there. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. Uh, of course, I'm gonna blur all of this for privacy's sake. And then I've gone ahead and give, given this sender uh, uh, a nickname. I called it Ding. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on create here. All right, to verify your identity, check your inbox. And here is that email that I received. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on that. I'm just gonna drag this up over to here. All right. So now your account has been uh, successfully confirmed. So we're gonna go ahead and click on review security. Um, and then we're going to uh, click on done. And then it's going to ask us to uh, enable two-factor authentication. Um, it says two-factor authentication will soon be required, so you may as well do it now. So let's go ahead and just do that. We're gonna to continue to two-factor authentication. Again, uh, I'm gonna use the Authy app here. 
and I will enter the phone number that I have associated with my Authy app. Again, this will be blurred. So then if I open my phone, uh, I'm not gonna show this, but if I open my phone, um, I'm gonna go ahead and enter a code here and click save. Okay, so what we're gonna do here uh, is kind of repeat a previous step, sort of. Uh, we're gonna click on create a single sender. It's gonna bring us back to where we just were, but I'm gonna click cancel right here. And right here uh, is the account that we created. Of course, I will have to blur some of that. So what I'm gonna do is click on resend verification. Something weird has happened here. So I'm going to uh, try to re-verify. Uh, re so right here, we're going to click on verify single sender. I don't know how I missed that a moment ago, but let's drag this up to here. All right, sender verified, cool, there we go. <laughs> All right, so now it says it's verified, that's good. Okay, so here we are, we're back on our dashboard, everything's verified, we're good to go. So what we wanna do is click right here where it says email API. We're going to go to integration guide. And then SMTP is what, the, or sorry, SMTP relay is what we wanna use here. Um, just because we don't need to integrate with an API or anything like that. So we're gonna click on choose. And then right here, we need to uh, create a key first. So we want to uh, generate uh, a key for that. The way we're gonna do that is we're going to uh, give uh, a name to this. So I'm just, again, I'm gonna call this ding, like so, and I'm going to create a key. So here we go. Now we have uh, the information that we need uh, for this. We've got our server, we have our ports, we have our username, which will be API key. And uh, then our password is down here as well. Um, so what we can do at this point, so I'm just gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna come back over here to uh, Uptime Kuma. I'm gonna go over here to the, the notification page. And so basically uh, you can see that most of this is already filled out. Uh, the notification type is email SMTP. I've got a friendly name here. This will vary from application to application or container to container, um, but this will just be kind of the process you'll go through. Uh, the host name is smtp.sendgrid.net. The port is 587. Uh, you can also use port 25. Um, so you can use port 25 or 587 for uh, unencrypted or TLS connections. You can also use port 465 for SSL connections. Uh, however you want to do that, um, you, can, uh, you can make your decision based on this. Um, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. My username, uh, again, is API key. And then my password, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, paste that in like so. Um, and then this will be uh, a different email address. So this will be <coughs> ding at dbtech.com. Uh, Let me verify that I didn't screw that up because I have a tendency to do things like that. So we're just gonna do this. The two email address, uh, I'm gonna do at dbtechreviews.com. Oops. Like so, um, and then we can basically just uh, say save, and then we can uh, come back over to here, click edit, and then click test. Sent successfully, that's good to see. So I'm gonna open this up, and then right here is ding at dbtech.com via SendGrid uptime testing. So that email went through the way we wanted it to. So that is, again, just one option that you could use for uh, setting up email notifications for your Docker containers, uh, your Docker server, uh, basically any way you want to get notifications that supports SMTP or actually uh, API, however you want to handle that, but specifically SMTP here. Uh, SendGrid appears to be a really, really cool option uh, that, again, gives you 100 free emails a day. Also, I should, I know I sound like I'm selling this, they don't know I'm making this. They're not sponsoring this. They're not paying me for this. They are in no way associated with this other than providing the service that I am demonstrating for you here. So just so you know about that, um, I just, I'm stoked that this system works so well, so easily. Um, so if you're interested in checking out an alternate or an alternative to using a dedicated Gmail address, you can absolutely use SendGrid for your SMTP notifications for your Docker server and containers. So hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Really does help out quite a bit. Uh, also, if you want to support the channel, uh, you can do that through any number of links in the description down below. I also have links uh, to this down there as well. Uh, but I think with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.